I'm Effie Parks. Welcome to Once Upon a Jane, the podcast. This is a place I created for us to connect and share the stories of our not so typical lives. Raising kids who are born with rare genetic syndromes and other types of disabilities can feel pretty isolating. What I know for sure is that when we can hear the triumphs and challenges from others who get it, we can find a lot more laughter, a lot more hope, and feel a lot less alone. I believe there are some magical healing powers that can happen for all of us through sharing our stories, and I'll take all the help I can get. Once Upon a Gene is proud to be part of Bloodstream Media. Living in a family affected by rare and chronic illness can be isolating, and sometimes the best medicine is connecting to the voices of people who share your experience. This is why Bloodstream Media produces podcast, blogs, and other forms of content for patients, families, and clinicians impacted by rare and chronic diseases. Visit bloodstreammedia.com to learn more. Today's episode is brought to you by Dante Labs, the global leader in genomics solutions for rare diseases. With their Rare Disease Health Package, they offer comprehensive whole genome sequencing for rare disease patients. To learn more about Dante Labs and how they're revolutionizing healthcare, visit us. DanteLabs.com. Hi there, and welcome to another enlightening episode of Once Upon a Gene. I'm your host, Effie Parks. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with another CTNNB1 and super fundraiser. I got to meet her in person a while back at our family conference, and then recently I heard her speaking with our beloved Annie on the CTNNB1 podcast about fundraising, and I was like, mm, to pluck her over here too and have that conversation. She's so awesome. She has dedicated her efforts to making a difference in the lives of our children who are affected by rare diseases. She's a skilled fundraiser at Cornell University, and she's harnessed her passion and her expertise to rally support for our vital research initiatives, and she's just awesome. So I'm so glad you're here for this conversation as we unpack the art of fundraising and discover how even the smallest efforts can spark profound change. Please enjoy my conversation with Lindsay Stevens. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, Effie. It's so great to be here with you. Yes, it's so nice to have you here. I got to meet your beautiful little daughter, Lark, when we had our CTNME One conference in New Jersey earlier this summer, and it was just so fun to watch her play in the park. She reminded me so much of Ford in so many ways. It's incredible. I know. They're just the cutest. Well, hey, Lindsay, can you start by sharing a little bit about yourself and your personal journey and just a little bit about your family and your background? Yeah, absolutely. I am a mom of three. I have two older girls who are typical, uh, Zoe, who's 13, Dahlia, who's nine, and then Lark, who's five. And Lark was diagnosed with CTNNB1 around uh, two and a half years old. And so just trying to navigate that uh, rare genetic disorder world and trying to make sure Lark has everything that she needs. And in my work life, I actually work for a, a large nonprofit, a university actually, and I actually, I do development work for them. So I'm well versed in the fundraising world. I spend a lot of my time asking folks for money. Typically it's for scholarships or research already. And so I'm sort of well versed in all things fundraising. So that's sort of my area of expertise at, at this point in my life, which is such a, a great connection for our parent group. Yes. When you told me that at our conference, I was like, Emily. Annie, find her. <laughs> it was exciting to hear. Well, yeah, so today we're going to actually just kind of pick your brain and talk a little bit about the importance of fundraising for research and for our patient advocacy groups. So, yeah, I just want to get a couple ideas, maybe a couple tips, maybe some action plans. So why is fundraising so crucial for advancing our medical research and helping us to find solutions? Why is it so important for families to get involved? Well, I think the main thing is that we're not seeing funding coming from large pharmaceuticals to pursue treatment for our kids. And so it's very much us making a grassroots movement ourselves. We're looking to researchers to help us find treatments for our kids. And so they need research dollars to be able to do that for us. At the conference recently when we were together, 
we heard about what our our researchers are looking for and they just need a little bit more support financially to keep keep pushing this forward and so for us it it seemed like a a big dollar amount that they were asking for you know it was something like one to three million dollars with with a lot of you know caveats to where we could potentially go with with what we're doing and even with some of the things that are available for pushing uh, drug through the drug approval process with FDA, it still seems like money is needed in order to be able to help our kids. And I know when I was sitting in that conference and I watched the room when one of the researchers said that $3 million, it, it, it felt overwhelming, I think. I think everyone in the room just kind of like breathed out like, oh my gosh, like this is so much money. And I was sitting there and I had a completely different perspective because I work in in research and doing fundraising for research all the time. And she said $3 million to me. And I I thought to myself, well, that's nothing compared to some of the projects that I've worked on before. And I, I did a little, you know, back of the napkin math at the table. And I said, okay, if we've got around 250 families and they need $3 million, that's $12,000 per family. And so I'm taking this very large sum and dividing it up amongst our parent group and thinking, you know what, I think this is a reasonable and attainable goal for us. I think we can do this. And it's just a matter of having each of our parents really thinking about their personal network and thinking about folks that they know and being really smart about where they're thinking their fundraising can come from. There's a couple of different avenues that I work with on on the daily that I really think can really help out our families. Would you like me to, to talk about that a little bit more too? Yes, Lindsay, give it to us. Okay. Well, something that I always ask folks that are thinking about making a gift is, does your company have a company match? This is a way to double your money in some cases. Uh, Some of the big companies like Microsoft, IBM, they offer a way to match the philanthropic giving that their employees do. And they actually put up the money to be able to to basically double down on whatever is important to you. And you can actually Google this on the on the internet. You can look up companies that do gift matching and it'll pull up a list of places that you, you might be able to basically harness the energy or the philanthropy that's happening in those big companies and put it towards things that are important to you. So that's one avenue to consider. It's thinking about also the grandparents that are uh, really wanting to help our kids. And maybe they're at that that magic age of 70 and a half where they have to start taking disbursements from their IRAs. And if they are to gift that to you personally, then they get taxed on it. But if they take the IRA disbursement and it goes directly to a nonprofit, that money doesn't get taxed. So it's a great way to maximize giving and really thinking about because those grandparents are often taking the disbursement and maybe they don't need that additional income. This is a great place to funnel the, the gift that they might already be making. And it's it's a smart tax way, a tax free way to make a, a gift uh, for our kids. Hey, listeners, I want to take a moment to talk about Dante Labs and their groundbreaking rare disease health package. If you or someone you know is facing the challenges of a rare disease, this is a game changer. With their advanced whole genome sequencing, Dante Labs provides a comprehensive view of your genetic makeup, helping to pinpoint the cause of a rare disease and offering potential treatment options. Dante Labs understands the time is of the essence for rare disease patients. That's why their results are available within weeks, not months. Plus, their pre- and post-specialist consultations offer invaluable support throughout your diagnostic journey. So, if you're seeking answers and support for rare disease, turn to the experts at Dante Labs. Visit us.dantelabs.com to explore the rare disease health package and take charge of your health today. Some other things to consider are writing a letter as an update and then making an appeal in that letter to the folks that you might be already sending a holiday card to. These are folks that wanna hear about our kids, 
want to know what's going on, what's the latest research news, and how they can help. Because a lot of times people want to hear about what's going on and they aren't really sure how they can make a difference. And this is a great way to do that. If you think about perhaps your your holiday card list is 200 people. If 200 people give $60, you've already re- met your $12,000 goal. So that's a, an incredible way to really make, an a different, make a difference for our kids and to do it in a way that's sustainable. Everybody wants to hear about our kids and hear how they're doing and, and what the latest and greatest news is. And so this is a wonderful way to talk to folks at the holiday time. You can also talk to them at the end of the school year. June is a great time. Thinking about when your rare genetic disease day is, doing some fundraising around and the, around those dates, thinking about back to school. Like these are sort of milestones that happen every year and being able to communicate with your friends and family who want to hear about your kiddo and then realizing that this is a, a wonderful way for them to make a small contribution but it will really impact our our kids. Those are all some really, really great ideas. And I love that they're a little more unique because I think people focus so much on the event aspect of raising money, you know, whether it's from the simplest bake sale lemonade stand to a giant golf tournament. I think it can overwhelm families to think of, you know, organizing all of that stuff and the time that goes into it while you're being a parent at the same time. So I love that those ideas that you just gave are kind of like work smarter, not harder ideas. Absolutely. This needs to be sustainable and it needs to be done over time. We need to really think about also how we steward gifts. So if someone makes a gift, it's really important for us to send that handwritten thank you note and request the lists from however your group is tracking gifts. It's important for us to be able to say that personal thank you because it really is making a big impact. And and those folks that are making gifts, we want them to come back and do it again. So doing a good job of the thank yous after a gift happens, I think is also really important because people want to know that you received the gift and you realize that that they are um, trying to help. So I think acknowledging gifts is, is a just as important as asking for one. So that's something also to consider when you're in this process, trying to make sure that the communication lines are open. Yeah. One of our beautiful moms, Nicole Dashiell, always sends uh, thank you cards out to anyone who donates through our website and stuff. And I do have to apologize to anyone listening who hasn't got a thank you card from me yet because I'm really behind and I love you so much. And it's something I am definitely going to get better at doing in a timely matter. So I'm sorry if you haven't got one of those from me. But yes, it's so important and it really makes a difference to show up in that way and let people know how grateful we are. So for those families who are hesitant in asking for financial support, what advice would you give to them and their communities? I think knowing that we are such a small grassroots parent run volunteer based group, we are the the last line, right? Like our children need us to not only care for them, but they need us to advocate for them and they need us to do this fundraising for them. No one else is going to find this to be as important as us as parents. So I I get emotional just just thinking about and talking about it because this is it. This is the bottom line. If, If you're going to be passionate about something, I think this is the area where you can really make a big difference with a a relatively small amount of of work doing that asking. And and I think there's always this dream with fundraising that you're going to find this person that's just going to show up and hand over $3 million. But that's not reality. Reality is small gifts and many, many, many of them. And people aren't going to know unless you ask that you need the money. So I think that's the main thing. I think also in my work, there's a lot of no's that happen too. That's something to be aware of too, that some people aren't going to uh, feel as passionately as we do about it. But the thing of it is, is there's so many people out there that will. So it's all about trying to reach the largest audience that you can to draw in the folks that are really passionate about it, just like we are. So when we talk about it, 
they hear us and they understand what's going on. And so it, it, to not be discouraged when you do get a, an occasional no to what you're trying to do. I'm sure you, Effie, doing all of the work that you do, hear feedback like that sometimes when, when you're out and about talking with people. And, and so I, I hope that the parent group doesn't feel discouraged when, when those occasional no's do come up because that's just part of what we do. That's part of what I do in my work too. Sometimes it's just not the right time. And making sure that you circle back and check in with them at, at a later time. You just hitting it um, when it's the right sort of everything comes together. And, and sometimes you never know who you're going to talk to and so who's going to be inspired. So I know, for example, I sent out a batch of letters and one of the people that I reached, actually, it was the father of someone that worked that came and volunteered at one of your events doing music, like music. And it's such a small world that she recognized Ford from the website and said, I know who these people are on Seattle. And I was talking <laughs> to somebody in Connecticut. Her father lives in Connecticut. It's just an, like an incredible networking story that we are really able to reach far if we just make the ask. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. I'll give it in a nutshell really quick. I was in Boston a couple weeks ago and I get a text from this beautiful angel named Allie, who's a musician and she played her band played at a fundraising event that I held with one of my friends. And she texts me the other day and she says, hey, I'm in Connecticut. My dad pulled me over to his computer to ask me for help on donating some money to his friend's kid. And I saw Ford's face on it. She was like, oh my gosh, what a small world. And I loved that story so much. That's so cool. It's such a testament to our little our little world. It feels very small. It's not that small. Yes, totally. One thing I love so much that you talked about in the beginning was that sort of pie and having, you know, 250 patient families thinking about raising $12,000 a year, like at least make that your goal and that the amount of everyone putting a little bit into that pie can be such an, an amazing impact. And I think that's a really good visual for families to not feel so overloaded and not feel so pressured and to realize that everyone doing their part is exactly what's going to make the dream work, right? And I wonder if you have any other creative grassroots sort of ideas of ways family can perhaps engage in their local communities as well to support their fundraising initiatives or how harnessing the power of those small contributions, like you said, not small, 12000 is a lot of money, but how can they harness the power of those to really understand the meaningful impact that they're making? You know, I've been trying to work on some advocacy things. So I've been contacting my New York State Senate and Assembly person representatives. I also reached out to one of our local groups that does a lot of work with developmental disabilities groups, and I'm going to write basically a, a piece for their, their newsletter. And this is a way to get the word out, right? Like it's our fundraising efforts are also advocacy work at the same time. So we're talking about how we can reach all of those folks that, that maybe have CTNNB1, but also have another diagnosis. And so we're really working to basically educate folks. And in that same breath, we're also talking about how money is needed, because this is something that's really missing in our capitalistic society. Our, our pharmaceutical companies are less interested because our patient group is much smaller. And so really to thinking about how, how can I both do fundraising and advocacy at the same time? I think I've seen some really great things happening on Facebook with our other parents. I saw a Splash for Savannah where folks were selling tickets for a, a slip and slide. I saw folks doing all kinds of different, um, really creative things. Uh, I saw a, a pumpkin fundraiser for Halloween. And our, our website has some great ideas on it too. So it really, you have to think about what is your skill set and how can you harness that skill set to apply it to this, right? I'm not an events person. That is not something that I feel really comfortable with. But you, Effie, are like very much about like you had music and you, you did this whole event planning thing because you're one of those hostesses with the mostest. That is your gifting. And so you really have to think about, okay, what am, what am I really skilled at? How can I think about making change happen in a way that's really sustainable 
and is natural to what whatever your your skills are. And so that's the thing for me. Like I like being able to send an update in a letter, being able to explain the research, but that might not be for everybody. I understand the scientific stuff. I find it interesting. That's that's just happens to be the way my brain works, but not everybody's going to have that approach. And so I think it's really important for everybody to really think about, okay, I can make this happen. This is what I like to do. So I think it, it can be very individualized. You can think about how you like to make change based on really what your skills are. So everybody's different. Yes, I love that. Find your gifts. I tell people that a lot. And I think that's so important about the family conferences and why you should show up, not just for the connection aspect of it all and to, you know, kind of get exposed to what's really going on behind the curtain, you know. But it sparks these ideas, right? And it gives you that momentum to let you know that, like, you are a part of this. You're actually the driving force. (laughs) And anything you do is going to make a difference for our families. And it motivates people. It sparks them into, like, wanting to figure out what you said. Like, what are you good at? What do you like to do? I do have to say the event that I held, I couldn't have done it without my friend Jill. It was a partnering event that we did. Which is another thing to think about, right? Like if you don't have the time or the expertise in certain areas, but you really want to do a thing, think about incorporating a friend or another family that's nearby or even in another state and you can do something online together. And then you can kind of share the load and use your specific gifts to make something happen. If one of you is not really good at, you know, one part of something, but you want to make it happen, think about doing a joint effort for an event like that. And like you said, think about telling your story partnering with others. And this way, it's 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 a way for us to just diversify how we're all raising money, right? Which is so important because you're not tapping into the same thing all the time. Absolutely. Utilizing social media and talking about how you can get people to come out, tabling at events that are already occurring. Most of the time you can work something out with a, a person who's doing some kind of an a, a event. And if it's a nonprofit, if you're trying to do fundraising for something like this, most of the time you can get a free spot. So really getting creative. I love the idea of partnering. I think that's really smart. And there's a lot of examples out there. So don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. There's so many resources on the internet, on our website. So even letter examples, or I'm happy to read anybody's letter if they feel like they're wanting somebody with a fundraising eye to take a look at what they're sending out. I'm happy to take a look at things. That's part of my job every day. So I'm, I'm happy to help in that in that way if, if they're wanting to run something by me. Keep reaching out and talking to people. I know for me, I reached out to our Facebook group and asked what other people were doing. I wanted a, to table at an event. And so Effie posted a picture of one of her tabling operations where she had everything set up and she had a few little goodies for people to take with them. And um, some, I think there was even like a trifold uh, pamphlet that people could take with them. And so I think that's a great way to share examples and, and utilize the network that we have by, by not reinventing the wheel. Yeah, totally. And if you're lucky enough to have someone in your patient advocacy group like Emily Emerson, who makes these beautiful pamphlets, definitely get that going because I have those now and they're I'm ready to print them. Like whenever I go somewhere, she has like this beautiful, simple little pamphlet with the with our branding, our CT and MB1 branding. And I can print it out and I can take 50 pamphlets with me when I, you know, go somewhere, go to a party, go into an event, you know, go to a children's hospital to do something or go speak somewhere. And I can just have those in my laptop bag or whatever. I can leave them places. I can hand them out when people ask me questions. Like all of those little teeny crumbs that you leave, you just, it's important and you never know who's going to show up, like you said, right? It was great to have those kinds of resources when I was talking to some of the lawmakers in our state. Being able to show them, hey, Positively Genetics partnering with us, there's possibility for free testing, all of that stuff they loved. So it just sort of legitimizes what we're doing. Hey, listen, we are a 501c3. Like we are doing nonprofit fundraising right now. Like this is what we need. (laughs) So it just it just really helps me to feel confident when I'm talking to people to have those kinds of materials 
My mom also had the idea of printing little business cards with Lark's picture on them and and the website information and the QR code to be able to get right to the giving website. I just I thought that was a great idea. So that's another thing where you have just have them with you all the time to be able to just hand to people if you just start talking about it. I always talk about um, my quote unquote 90 second commercial. Back in the day, they used to call this your elevator speech, right? So you talk to people every day about what's going on with your kids and you run into strangers and you and you just start talking about it. <laughs> and so uh, I found it's really helped me to sort of whittle down my 90 second commercial about Lark to really be concise and be able to talk about what our issues are, what we need, and just, you know, hand them a card if, if I'm talking to them about something and they seem interested. You know, you're at a soccer game, you're, you know, waiting in line at the grocery store and they ask you about your kiddo. I mean, I've had these interactions numerous times with colleagues at work. So I think it's just great to be able to have those little things with you all the time to be able to interact and be able to talk about all the things all the time. I I just, it's so interesting who you run into and meet when you feel vulnerable, like have those vulnerable conversations with people about what's going on in your life with your kiddos. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. And also I think the grandparents have been have been chatting because my mother-in-law also carries around a business card with Ford's face on it. And that is, it's just another great way to kind of get that exposure. And I love that you brought up the elevator pitch because it is so important to have kind of your story whittled down to less than three minutes, right? 90 seconds could is even better. But figure out how you can tell some of your story and why it's important to you and what you're doing and what help you need in such a concise way that it doesn't overwhelm anyone listening, but they understand that it's serious and it and it's important to you so much so that you know exactly how to have an ask and to deliver a message concisely and in a short amount of time because people are busy. Absolutely. And it doesn't feel hard once you get it down. Whoop, it's like, bang, I'm done. That's it. My, that's my spiel. What can you do to help? Seriously, people people love a story. And yeah, again, I really want to kind of remind you as a patient advocacy group, have those assets in a folder in something pinned on your Facebook group, wherever it is, maybe it's on your website of assets people can print out on their own at any time, whether it's a pamphlet, a one sheet, business cards, have those things and encourage your families to have them on them and pass them out at things in between their fundraising efforts and their events that they're holding it's just a great way to keep circulating it. I know in my small community, I every time I go somewhere now, people know people know who I am because I talk about Ford everywhere. I post about it in our Facebook group that's just for our local neighborhood. Like I talk about Ford everywhere and I take him everywhere and people know my story. I've contacted our local newspaper. You'd be surprised how receptive your local newspapers are at helping you to share your story. There's just so many ways and We need to just make a list. Maybe we'll add a printable list on the back end of this episode for people to realize the long term sustainability efforts that are required to continuously raise money over time and how we can break it down and make it so much simpler than this big looming raise all these millions of dollars to help your kids or else. Yeah. And I think I think it's important to talk about burnout. I think, you know, with really active parents it can feel like it's nonstop constantly. And to I just want to remind you to take care of yourself when it feels like that. It's time to take a break. And then you'll be re-energized to be able to re-engage later. And really thinking about that partnership aspect. When one parent is doing something, act as a support for them. And then when it's your turn and it, and it comes around that you're, you're leading something, then that parent's going to be happy to jump in and act as a, as a support for you. So just really thinking about sustainability and, and doing those self-care things because our lives are packed. We're getting our kids to all their therapies. We're doing all the doctor's appointments. We're making sure that they're getting to all of their events and activities. And then it just, sometimes it can feel like, oh man, now I got to do this one more thing. But that one more thing is critically important to to the cause. And we're going to stop spinning our wheels if we can just generate a little bit more uh, finances to be able to push forward and see some incredible things happen. So just 
keep in mind that sustainability piece because that that is really important. Thank you so much for bringing up that taking a break and that burnout aspect. I really appreciate it. Yeah, don't go hide and feel bad about it. It's totally normal. Pass that torch, babe, and take a break because I can tell you from experience, when you take that break, you have so much more energy and service to give and you're more excited about it when you get back at it. And even if all you have the capacity for is to share on social media someone else's fundraiser in your community, that's a huge deal. And that is not something to be to feel bad about. That matters. And if that's what you can do with what's going on in your family right now, high five to you. So thanks for that reminder. We all we all know how important it is to to take those breaks and to recognize when we need a breath. Yeah. Well, Lindsay, you're the best. I'm so happy that you're a CTNNV1 mom. Thanks for showing up and uh, figuring out how to use your gifts for us and for everyone listening. I hope you took home some good ideas. And again, like Lindsay so generously offered, if you want some help like with your letter or you want her to read it, she's she's a professional fundraiser. So get in touch with her. And I really appreciate your time. So thank you so much for being my guest today. So great, Effie. I'm so glad to be here. And I, I'm rooting for everybody that's listening. It's so great. Yes. A special thank you to Dante Labs for sponsoring this episode of Once Upon a Gene. To learn more about Dante Labs and how they're revolutionizing healthcare, please visit us.dantelabs.com. I hope you've been enjoying this podcast. If you like what you hear, please share this show with your people and please make sure to rate and review it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also head over to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to connect with me and stay updated on the show. If you're interested in sharing your story or if you have anything you would like to contribute, please submit it to my website at effieparks.com. Thank you so much for listening to the show and for supporting me along the way. I appreciate you all so much. I don't know what kind of day you're having, but if you need a little pick-me-up, Ford's got you. Ha 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 